And we are live. Welcome to Buddha School. I'm Jess, as I'm sure most of you know, and broadcasting here from my condo in Thailand, overlooking the sea and the hills. I've been back in Thailand for over a week now, maybe close to two weeks or so, and had an opportunity to spend some time in the temples, and I've had a lot of free time, and I thought I would share some of my free time uh, with you tonight so we could have some time together to practice our mindfulness and our meditation. When I have the opportunity and the wherewithal, I'll be happy to continue uh, this series and hopefully soon upload it to my Jess Kaufman YouTube channel as well so that people who aren't in the inner circles can also have an opportunity to be a part of these teachings and this very big movement that's happening starting in Thailand with Lung Pa Promote where uh, the teachings of the Buddha and the teachings on mindfulness for insight are having a resurgence where there are so many teachings about mindfulness and meditation available. They aren't having the truly intended effect, which is insight into reality and ultimately uh, enlightenment, transcending uh, body and mind and being able to have a dependable uh, type of happiness from liberation, from body and mind, even as we are awake and alive uh, in this body and in this mind. So this is my first time using this particular platform, and... I believe there are uh, chat capabilities, so feel free to say hello in the chat area if you've been able to locate it so that I know you're there. And I'd like to start off today's talk and meditation with reminding us a little bit about what it is a deeper down that we are doing. What is it that we are doing? And we all might have different answers for that when we move into our memories and our thoughts about who we think we are and what it is that we're doing in our lives. Some of us are trying to move forward and accomplish things. And some of us are just, some of us are just living. We're uh, caught in routines where we don't have any real goals in our lives. Uh, the goal is just to try to find some happiness through the day and get through work and make money and and live. Perhaps just continue relationships, stay up on people's lives and our family's lives and be there for them in some ways, uh, which has its rewards, certainly, but doesn't have direction and is lacking a sense of why am I here? And do I have any greater potential than this? Well, it turns out that what we are doing, what we are all doing, is we are seeking happiness. If we take a look on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, 
there is a seeking that is going on. And this seeking all stems from a deep down understanding or misunderstanding or agreement that we have made that I don't want this body and mind to be uncomfortable and I want them to be comfortable. That's it. That's what we're going on. That's the at the core of what it is that we are going on. Now, how can I illustrate that as true? You'll have to be able to see inside you that in any given moment, whether it be for later in the future or immediate satisfaction, there's a sense of trying to be satisfied. So even as you are listening to me now, you might notice that you'll hear the words and then mull over what I meant and try to understand. You're like, okay, I get it. Okay, where is he going? There's, There might be, so what's going on in the background there is there's a little difficulty or discomfort with not understanding what's being said or where I'm leading, or maybe I'm not getting to the point quick enough, a little bit of discomfort. And then there'll be a way to try to make things more comfortable than happen. So with regarding to listening to me talking right now, it might come up as, okay, I get what he means. Or let's see where he's leading. That could be interesting, right? Telling ourselves something in order to make ourselves feel a little bit better or more comfortable. In some cases, in order to feel comfortable at the vibration that we're vibrating at, if you're frustrated uh, at times with what I'm saying, then there might be a, oh, this isn't very good, or this isn't going well. Uh, you know, some sort of a release, saying something, having an opinion that feels at least more satisfactory or satisfying to to have that opinion that uh, so we might feel a little anxious or a little uncomfortable and then an idea in our head we have there to make ourselves feel a little bit more comfortable to feel a little bit better about it and then the process continues it doesn't just happen once it's happening absolutely all of the time so while that's happening and while I'm talking about this there is also a body there that you have that's moving and shifting. And why is it moving and shifting a little bit here and there, a toe moving, a finger moving, a scratch, a, and adjusting the back and these things? Why are these things happening? Well, it's very simple why these things are happening. They're because, they're because there is discomfort and we're looking to move towards comfort, right? So the body, in a sense, is unhappy, or the mind is unhappy with the position of the body because there's discomfort and then it moves or shifts to try to be comfortable again. Now, these things happen under the radar, not just occasionally. They're happening moment to moment. There's almost no five-second interval where there isn't some attempt at making things feel more comfortable whether it be by trying to tell ourselves something, whether it be by trying to focus or hold attention on an object, like as a meditator, whether it be by shifting the body so that there's a little bit of relief. There are many, many different tactics that the mind uses, again, below the radar that we're not even noticing to try to make things better or more comfortable. In fact, even coming and listening to this talk, uh, whether it sounded interesting or whether it sounded like something uh, that would be fun or a good thing to do with my time, better myself, underlying uh, the motive, the, the underlying motive for coming to listen to this talk 
is so that either now or later there can be more comfort, more satisfaction. Now, is that a bad thing? No, it's not good or bad per se. What's happening, though, is that this deeper consciousness that we have, that believes that suffering is not what we want and is unbearable, and we should try to fix it whenever it arises, and find a way to feel a little bit more comfortable, that isn't a fight we can win. All we get is a moment where things are better, and then it starts to become a little bit uncomfortable again. And then what happens is the mind will either seek happiness again uh, via some type of distraction, via some thoughts to make us feel better, or uh, seek happiness again by just finding a way to relieve uh, the suffering, whether it be the body or the mind that is anxious. And so it just continues and continues. There's no end to this cycle of feeling uncomfortable and then trying to make it comfortable again. Feeling it uncomfortable and then trying to make it comfortable again. See if you can recognize this, not just, oh, okay, that's interesting, you know, as a thought. Right? But see if you can recognize it actually happening by using mindfulness, which means being able to see or recollect what it is that you are just busy doing in, in the mind. And uh, as well in the body. So these are truths I'm talking about that are verifiable in your own experience. So even the idea that, okay, this is interesting what he's talking about, even when that idea comes to you, you can then see that, oh, that was part of making myself feel good. I was involved in liking something there, and that, that, and that was good. You might then notice that that moment might have been there, following a moment that was less satisfying. You may then notice that it, after a moment that where well, it's liking what I'm saying, that what happens is it tries to hold on or keep the liking going, maybe by thinking something else that is enjoyable, or maybe by getting more meditative, hoping that that'll help, or trying to be a little extra mindful, a little more effort in the practice, uh, so that we can be happier again for another few moments, trying to sustain feeling good. So this is what's going on at the core. And it isn't that it's bad that this is going on, it's just something that we need to fix or tweak in order to get the mind developing in the right direction towards actually achieving reliable states of happiness. Because these states aren't very reliable, are they? We just have a moment and then it's not so comfortable again. And then we try to have another moment, right? And you might notice that if you're having many moments that are happy or comfortable in a row, that in the background there's a holding going on. It's actually not as comfortable as we thought. We might be attending to the breath or attending to a meditation object as, as tightly as, as we can to try and hold feeling good. So from the position of understanding that there isn't any state that lasts and coming from the place of understanding that suffering is basically the default state of the human being and seeking pleasure again and again and again has never worked to uproot that default suffering state. It just provides short moments and then there's suffering again. It just provides short distractions and then there's suffering again. Right? Come